today is try to explain the independent and the dependent, okay? And this has to do with sovereignty. So we go to the maxims. There's three of them that really make a lot of sense when we talk about independence and dependence and the sovereignty. Okay, so what you create, you control. That's our first maxim. Our second maxim is um, the master cannot also be the servant. And our third maxim is the landlord cannot also be the tenant. And all three of those apply in this situation, um, what I'm going to explain to you. Okay, so when you create something, that creation is your dependent and you're the sovereign. Okay, so you're the sovereign and that thing that you created is your dependent. So if you're the landlord, you rule over the tenant to some degree. If you are a master, you rule over your servant. If you're a parent, you rule over your children. If you um, create something, you rule over your creation. So you control it. So let's talk about how the federal government and the military is created. Um, First, you have the settlers and inhabitants. They're the first sovereigns, the, the, the free, sovereign, and independent people. And they created something. They created their own state. Now, I'm not talking about the state that the federal government rules over. I'm talking about the state that created the federal government, that was created by the inhabitants and settlers. So, you have... A population of people in a territory, in an area, and they create, after they reach a certain number, a state. Their state, after they create it, is free, sovereign, and independent because it, it represents those settlers and inhabitants. Now, in this country, those a bunch of those states got together and they created something. And that creation is 100% dependent on what created it. So the federal government is like the child of the states. The states all got together and they made this child and they called it United States. Okay. So the United States is the federal government. And the federal government is dependent on the states that created it. Okay? Then the federal government made states of its own on the lands that were annexed to the federal government by the independent states. Okay? So these states created by the federal government are 100% dependent. They will never grow up and be their own sovereign. They will never be independent. They will always and forever be dependent because they were given no sovereignty. Okay, the, the federal government had no sovereignty to give to it. And those are the military areas or the federal areas inside the states, the annexed lands. Okay. So we're going to go to Black's Law 9th. We're going to see here it says independent state, C, sovereign state. Okay, independent union, C, union. Now, the union, which is the United States, created something. It created dependent states. Okay, those dependent states are dependent on the union. And because the union has a dependent in some small respects, in some small regards, the union is independent. Okay, it has a little bit of sovereignty. So if sovereignty is dependence, or I'm sorry, if sovereignty is independence, the people are 100% independent. The state it created is a, uh, has a little bit of independence, 
it created a union that has a little bit of independence and it created um, smaller states which have no independence because it wasn't given any sovereignty and these are the military areas. The military areas were not given any sovereignty so they're not de independent at all. They're 100% dependent. Okay, I have the definition for dependent here somewhere. Dependent state. I just have to find it. Here it is back here. Dependent state. C. Non-sovereign state under state. Okay. These are the military areas. Okay. The military areas, because they're dependent, they have no sovereignty. Because they have no sovereignty, they cannot secede from the Union. So all of this stuff in the independent state that looks like a state is not really an independent state. It has no, it has no authority. It has no clothes. It can't tell you what to do. So the, the federal government called these dependent areas, which are the military reservations or federal lands, they called them um, state of and whatever state it was inside. Let me show you something else real quick that might help um, help understand. I have something on flags on the stars that I found that describes um, here it is that describes what the stars are. Now this goes back to um, the Vitruvian man, which is the man in the circle, and how if you connect the outside of him, it forms a pentagon. Or inside the pentagon, there's a, like a star. So if we took this star and drew lines around it, it would be a pentagon. So we get into a lot of symbolism, but the pentagon is basically the symbol of man. Okay, now it says this star is also the most widely used military symbol and is found on the tanks and fighter jets of all the superpowers, as well as in the armed forces of all other countries and uniforms, etc. It is in this particular use related to the Pentagon, which we have a Pentagon that's uh, owned by the Department of Defense or controlled by the Department of Defense. And this group and to, and to star the sign of the planet Venus as the morning star and the goddess of war. Okay, for nearly all armed forces. Now it's the goddess because it's feminine. Okay, so the feminine does not go around harassing people. The feminine is like building up of forts, which is under the word defense with a C. Okay, if you go to defense with an S, you're talking about um, the Latin word, which means to, to seek vengeance. Now, that's a masculine verb. Now, I'm not talking about male and female. I'm talking about feminine and masculine. Okay, and like I said, this is like symbolic type of stuff. Uh, for nearly all armed forces on this planet, the golden five-pointed star without crossing lines is the symbol par preference of military rank and power. So when we look at the flag, we're looking at the military stars, the stars representing military powers. These are the, you have a big square and you have stars inside of it. So this represents the military powers or the dependent states inside the dependent states. The stars do not represent each of the independent states, it represents the military power inside the independent state because the flag is for a representation of military power, okay? And the stars on the flag represents the number of uh, military states. Back in the congressional journals during, this, during the Revolutionary War, they called the army an, an army state. Okay, so the army was a state, the navy was a state, and you can't think of it as in a state in 
you know, this territory because a state in a general sense is a legal entity under statute. It's a, it's a, something created by man. All right. So, so the military areas inside the independent state are the dependent states. They're not sovereign. They have no sovereignty. They have no power to come tell people what to do or how to live or that they have to get vaccines. They can't issue commands to us. We're supposed to issue commands to our state, which is basically not existent right now. They issue commands to the federal government, which is why they don't want our states to exist. And they want us to believe that our states don't exist because they don't want us to give them commands and they don't want us to know that we can issue commands. So this, the people issue the commands to the state, the state issues the commands to the union, the union issues the commands to its dependent states. So dependent states, because they're not sovereign, they cannot secede from the union. They cannot become a state within a state, even though they're considered a state. So when you look at the Constitution, you can see that there were um, territories called states created by the settlers and inhabitants that, um, that issued commands to the federal government and gave lands to the federal government. Okay, and then after that, it, that state basically stops. Once those lands are issued to the federal government, now we're talking about a different state. We're talking about the dependent state. And that's, those are the states that the federal government commands in the Constitution. So you see at first, it's the independent states giving lands to the federal government. And then after Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, you see a dependent state where the federal government issues commands to that. So it's not issuing commands to the state belonging to the settlers and inhabitants. It can't because that which you create, you control and this, the independent states created the federal government. The dependent states were created by the federal government. So the independent states issue commands to the federal government they issue commands to the uh, dependent states. Okay, so what is, a, what is an independent state? An independent state is the sovereign, the sovereign power. Okay, a sovereign state, also termed independent state. Okay, um, sovereign states are thus conceived as hermetically sealed units, uh, atoms that spin around in international orbit, sometimes colliding, sometimes cooperating, but always separate and apart. Okay, so this is the essence of statehood is sovereignty. Okay, so when the federal government says that it wants to turn D.C. into a state, it's claiming that it wants to become sovereign. It cannot ever be sovereign unless it's a uh, uh, taking power illegally, okay? That is, that is something that, that would go against, even the founders knew that they had to create a constitution in order to kick out the king and end his charters because you can't just say, well, I'm sovereign, now you have to go away. There has to be some power, some force behind it. So, the, the federal government couldn't create a constitution unless all the states allowed it. So the states had to do something. They had to ratify the constitution by annexing lands to the federal government for defense purposes. The federal government cannot ever become the sovereign over everyone, but that's what it wants. It's um, like they say, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So this machine uh, has become evil and it wants power absolutely. It's become like a tyrannical king um, and it can't do that. And if it does, it's, it's going to be doing it like um, 
the whole world is is going to know that this is this is a bad thing and if it if it even tries to do that then i think it's totally and completely just lost all idea of what's moral and good and governments must be good governments if they're not good governments then they're not governments at all bad governments are not governments bad governments are just evil things okay so also here look at um federal citizen is a citizen of the united states a citizen of the federal areas because united states really means federal areas okay so um I hope this is I hope this is something that people can grasp and understand about the sovereignty and where it comes from, the independent state and dependent state. Um, they can't they when I say they, I mean either the state of whatever state you're in or the federal government cannot control the settlers and inhabitants, private citizens or natural persons. It it can't happen. It can't exists the only way to do it is just by being pure evil and as bad as the king was the founders knew that they couldn't just kick him out they had to create declaration of independence they had to create articles of confederation they had to create a union of states they had to allow the states to be created then to create a union of states and then a military a constitution. They had to do all these things in this way in order to end the king's charters. Well, right now we have a Federal Reserve banking charter. Congress can't end it. They have to ask the bank to end itself and the bank has to agree. So if the bank doesn't agree, then it's just going to go on forever. That would be like asking Gates to stop giving vaccines. He's not going to do it because the federal government pays for the vaccines. And then they try to force everyone to get a vaccine. Because the more vaccines you get, the more they can buy to replace the ones that they've already given. So then they're giving money back to Gates. So what control does Gates have over the federal government to get them to buy the vaccines. Well, whoever in Congress is either a part of Gates, which we now know is um, uh, Dr. Fossey, and, and whoever else is in Congress that Gates has his claws into, um, using WHO and the um, CDC, which are not even a part of government, and I can show you that. Um, because here you see Title II is not a law because it has no positive law citation. We know it doesn't have a positive law citation because there's not an asterisk here. If you want to know about positive law citation, click here. Go to Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204A. It starts here. Read that. Okay, you can do that on your own. I've talked about it in many of my videos. But just go down the list. Um, there's a lot of things that you think are laws that are not laws, like getting your kids vaccinated so they can attend public school. It's not a law. And the state of Texas is not my state as a free person. It's the state of all the um, federal lands and federal laws in my state that are supposed to govern the military and um, the other federal areas as well as the uh, officers and employees of those lands. Okay, so nothing they do is really supposed to affect me. And people say, well, what about highways? They ticket you on the highway. Well, look here, it says, it says that there's an asterisk right here, Title 23 highways. But when you look through here, see, they're tricky. When you look through here, there's no positive law citation in this um, in this title. It should be right here. It's not here. It's not even down here. It should be in the front matter. You go up to Title One, Title One, Chapter uh, Front Matter. It's right here. 
that's where that's where it is and if it's and if it's on the last page at the bottom so even if the positive law citation was down in infrastructure in section let's just pick one program administration only the things after it are considered positive law not the things that came before it because the positive law citation is where everything is made a law after. So they tell you, you have to get a shot. Well, if you look here, um, where is it? Like internal revenue, none of that's a law. It's not a law. There's no positive law citation. Indians, hospitals, asylums, food and drug, not a law. Education, customs and duties, not law, commerce and trade, not law, because they don't, it doesn't go by the Constitution. They don't use the Constitution when, they're, when they do this. You could go here and you can read. It's a editorial comp, uh, co an editorial compilation of laws, but the title itself is not a law, and so the title can't be used as evidence in any court as ever being made a law. But they, they try to tell you their laws, and they say, you have to follow the law, it's the law, it's the law. But then when you look in here, it says may, can, could. Words like that are not law, because those aren't commands. Commands are you will, you shall, you better, if you don't then, um, you must. Those are commands. Okay, now if I'm the sovereign, who's going to command me? Nobody. I'm independent. I'm free, sovereign, and independent. Nobody's going to command me. Now, if I were in the military, I would be considered a member of the dependent state, a citizen of the United States or federal citizen. And I would be issued commands. The commands are in the titles that are made positive. Title I. Title three, Title four, Title five. Oh, guess guess what? Congress never makes itself um, uh, subject to um, commands. Why? Because the independent state, which is basically not in existence, because. They came in and took over during the Civil War and started up their state of Texas and pretended like that was our state. Um, we haven't given them laws. We haven't commanded them. We haven't told them what to do. They are our dependent state. That's the seat of Cong that's the seat of government right here. And the president is the seat of government. But we haven't issued commands to them. And that's my opinion why this is not positive because they're not going to make it positive themselves. They're not, they're not going to issue to themselves their own commands. Um, they have to do what's in the constitution. They have to take an oath, but title two, a compilation of laws, they don't care. They're not going to follow them. The sovereign does what the sovereign wants, whatever the sovereign wants. And that's, that's the way it works. It's not anarchy. It's sovereignty. So people think that anarchy means you just go around and you can kill people and steal. No, because we're still humans and we still have um, certain ways of, of living in society that we um, adhere to. You can call them custom laws, religious laws, um, common laws, moral laws, whatever you want. Okay. So, um, this is Black's Law 9th, if you want to look it up, and I have posted it on another website called archive.org, and it's got the highlights and stuff in it, and I can give you a link to that, and you can go there and check out some other videos and um, look at some of the papers that I have. Most of the papers that I've mentioned, not most of them, but some of them are um, in there already. So if you want to go check that out, I'll put the link in the description and you can see that and um, like, share, subscribe and understand that you are the independent, you are the sovereign 
um, you're the first independent, the first thing, you're the first creator, you're the landlord, and you're the master. However you want to look at it, however you like to say it, you can say it in all those ways. They are your servants. They are your tenants. They are your creation. Okay. And if we don't control it, then we're not doing our job as creators. And so far we haven't been controlling it and we can't control it individually. We, we have to get together and control it all together. So, um, they are our dependents. Okay. They are our creations. So we have to control them. So consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and, um, I'll see you in the next video.